everybody, it's Mrs. Cat, and I'm here to talk about solution concentration. Um, we're going to look at some notes and some examples on concentration, specifically on molarity, molar solutions, and on diluting solutions. Now, the first part of this page has definitions of solute, solvent, and solution. These should be in your three levels diagram for um, solvation. If you want to add these here, you certainly can, right? Um, but we're not going to take the time to go over that again. So we're going to start right in with molarity. Um, molarity is a measurement of solution concentration that's related to the number of moles of solute and liters of solution, right? So we're going to write this as a proportion, as we can see down here beneath, okay, molarity, which is um, abbreviated with a capital M, is moles of solute per liters of solution. Um, we can write our units for this as moles per liter. Okay, we're also going to see this as just capital M, which is referred to as molar concentration. This is the most common concentration unit used in the lab. And the big thing with this is you really have to pay attention because your volume has to be in liters. Okay, so we've got moles coming back. Okay, remember, okay, we've got one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of your substance. That's Avogadro's number. Okay, it's also equal to the molar mass of a substance in grams. Right, so that's usually where we're going to be um, looking for a molar conversion is by using a molar mass. So let's just hop right in and take a look at our example problem. Now, as you can guess, with everything that we've done mathematically, we're going to be using proportions to help us out here. So in this problem, we want to know what the molarity is of an aqueous solution that contains 40.0 grams of glucose and 1.5 liters of solution. Now, just a reminder, with aqueous solutions, this means that water is your solvent. Okay, in this case, that doesn't actually matter because all we care about is the volume of solution that we have. Okay, so what we're going to need here is to figure out the number of moles of glucose that we have available in that 1.5 liter of solution. So I want to start out by finding the molar mass of glucose which is C6H12O6. So I'm gonna pull out my periodic table, my periodic table of ions, and use my molar masses from there to find the total molar mass here. So I've got six carbon atoms at 12.01 grams a piece. I've got 12 hydrogen atoms at 1.01 grams a piece. And I've got six oxygen atoms at 16.00 grams a piece. Okay, go ahead and do the math here. It should give me 180. Let me make sure. Six plus six times 16. 180.18 grams of C6H12O6 for every one mole. Okay, so I'm gonna write that as a proportion. Um, and then I can set this up to find my number of moles. So if I'm looking for how many moles there are of glucose, C6H12O6, in 40.0 grams, I'm going to set up my proportion to find my moles by saying one mole of glucose is equal to 180.18 grams. Nice little review of moles here. They're coming back. Okay. And now I'm going to be ready to cross multiply and solve for my number of moles. Okay. In this case, we're going to cross multiply and divide. So we're going to wind up taking 40 divided by that molar mass of 180.18, and that's going to give me 
0.2220 2, moles of glucose. Okay, now because molarity is moles of solute per liters of solution, this makes it nice and easy for us because all we need to do now is divide by that volume of 1.5 liters to get the molarity of this, this solution. Okay, so I'm going to take those number of moles divided by 1.50, and then I'm going to want to round to my significant figures. So I get 0 0.148000 as my calculated answer, but because of the 1.5 liters, I want to round this to two significant figures, which is going to turn out to be 0.15 molar. Okay. If you don't already have moles given to you in the problem, and you have grams like we do here, that is always going to be your first step, okay? Now, not every problem is going to be like this. We are going to have some situations where we're going to need to use the calculation for molar concentration to find how much solute we need to, to be dissolved in a particular solution, okay? Now, when we actually make these solutions in the lab, we use a, a piece of equipment called a volumetric flask. Um, which is measured to a specific volume. We're going to dissolve our solute by adding water or whatever the solvent happens to be until the volume reaches the particular line on the neck of the flask. Okay? Um, and there's a video linked in the module that shows you how to make one of these solutions. But in order to do that, you have to calculate how much solute you need. So let's take a look at our second example where we're going to be looking for the grams of calcium chloride we need to dissolve in one liter of a 0.1 molar solution of calcium chloride. So we're still gonna use proportional reasoning this time, but what we need to do to start out with is to find how many moles of calcium chloride we actually have in that particular solution, and then we can convert to grams. We are gonna need molar mass, so I'm gonna go ahead and find that. Uh, molar mass of CaCl2. So calcium atom is 40.08 grams, two chlorine atoms at 35.45 grams apiece. So I'm going to go ahead and add this up. Should give me 110.98 grams per mole. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. And we're going to do this pretty frequently. Um, I'm going to choose a different color here. Let's use blue. Okay, molarity. This is going to be written as a proportion. Remember, this is moles per liter, right? So if we have one point, um, or excuse me, 0 0.10 moles per liter, okay, that's what we're going to write here. Okay, let me rewrite this over here in my workspace so I've got a little bit more room to work. So this actually tells me that I'm going to have 0.1 mole of calcium chloride for every one liter of calcium chloride solution, okay? So in this case, this works out nicely, right? We know we're gonna have 1.0 liters of our solution that we're trying to make. So we're gonna say X moles, okay? This is just to show you what to do because obviously it's gonna turn out to be exactly the same in this case. Okay, so this is gonna give me 0.1 moles of CaCl2, right? Um, from here, we can find the number of grams using molar mass, right? So I'm actually gonna move this down just a little bit. And I'm gonna say, okay, how many grams is this? You all know at this point, I like to put my X on top. So here's where I plug in my molar mass, 110.98 grams. CaCl2 for every one mole, CaCl2, cross multiply, divide. In this case, we're going to find that our X is going to be 11.098 grams of CaCl2. Looks like we want to round to two significant figures, which will give us 11 grams. So what this tells us is if we're going to make one liter of this 0.1 molar solution, we need 11 grams of the calcium chloride to be mixed up to a volume of one liter. Okay, so we need to add enough water to get that to be up to one liter. 
Okay, now not every solution is made using a solid solute that you can mass on a balance. We have solutions that we'll make by taking a more concentrated solution and adding more solvent to it. So what happens to our concentration when we add more solvent? Okay, well the total number of moles will stay the same But since volume of the solvent increases, the molarity will decrease. Okay, so we should, when we dilute, always wind up with a smaller molarity because we're going to wind up with a larger volume with the same amount of moles. Okay, so let's take a look at how we would calculate and solve for um, a volume or a molarity. We solve for them the same way in a problem like this. So we want to know what volume of three molar potassium iodide, this is Ki, okay, stock solution, would you use to make a 0.3 liter solution of point? or excuse me, 1.25 molar Ki. So a couple things here. Stock solution, this is going to be more concentrated. Okay, again, that's going to mean we're going to have a higher molarity, okay, which we obviously do here, right? 3 molar versus 0.3 molar. Um, what we want to do in a situation like this, whatever solution you have both pieces of information on, you're going to use this to find the number of moles. Okay, and then you're going to use the second volume or molarity to solve for what's missing. Okay, so in this case, we want to use that molarity as our. Um, Proportion, we're going to say that we have, um, we're looking for some number of moles of Ki if we have a 0 0.300 liter solution of Ki. And I know the molarity of that is going to be 1.25 moles of Ki if I've got one liter of potassium iodide solution. So, cross multiply, we can solve for the number of moles, which in this case we're going to take 0.3 times 0.125 to get 0.375 moles of Ki. All right. Now that we have that piece of information, we can use our second molarity in this case, um, let's change colors here. Okay, our 0.3 molar potassium iodide solution to solve for volume. Okay, so again, you know I like to use X on top. So I'm looking for how many liters of Ki I'm going to need if I have 0.375 moles of Ki and the solution that I started with has three moles of Ki for every one liter of Ki solution. Okay, so cross multiply and divide. We're going to take 0.375 times one divided by three, and we should wind up with a volume of 0.125 liters. And this is of the 3.00 molar potassium iodide. Okay. Now, these are always going to be related through the number of moles. Yikes. So if you want to double check here, you should be able to take your uh, molarity times your volume and make sure that you can still get your number of moles. Right. So that's our connection through our dilution.
is to find your number of moles that you have available and okay, from your volume and concentration that you already have, and then you'll use um, what's missing um, and what you're given to solve finally there. So you have a little bit more practice with this um, through some of your other activities. Please make sure that you are reaching out if you have any questions, um, make sure that you're using some of the help videos that'll be posted in your module as well. And I hope that you have good luck with your concentration of solutions.